it just left to the right center. I'm Aiden McDonald. And I'm Pat Riley. Here are tonight's top stories. A recent ad by banking giant Wells Fargo depicting a gay couple adopting a child. Since its airing, it has sparked controversy, causing one prominent religious group to pull its funds out of Wells Fargo. This is a grotesque action, as it represents a prime example of intolerance and hatred that is present in our society today. In welfare news, lawmakers in Kansas are passing a law that bans people on welfare from buying tattoos, concert tickets, and piercings. While it is money that could be used for other living expenses, it is their money and they should have the right to utilize it as they see fit. Just recently, the world witnessed perhaps the most progressive action in the fight for marriage equality. On Saturday, May 23rd, Ireland, despite its strong roots in Catholicism, became the first country to pass gay marriage popularly as well as nationally. This vote, which passed in favor of marriage equality 1,201,607 votes to 734,300 votes, can only stand to help society as a whole and promote the acceptance of the LGBT community. The popular cartoon couple Homer and Marge of the famous American series The Simpsons are rumored to be legally splitting in the upcoming season. The separation of the two in 20, season 27, which is set to air on September 27th, has sparked controversy amongst the show's fans. When asked about the split, executive producer Al Jean wanted to set the record clear that this action would not be final and that, quote, by episode 3, everything's the same. I never said the word divorced, that implies finality. End quote. Regardless of the reunification of the couple, this act does show the acceptance of family changes in American media and values and will help Americans get out of family matters that simply aren't right for them. I mean, let's face it, Marge could do far better than Homer. A law is being passed through the House that will look to legalize third trimester abortions, which are illegal at this point, since they are so far along is considered immoral by many. However, if it is to protect the mother or to get rid of a baby that would otherwise be unwanted, it is in the Constitution to protect the mother's right to choose. Roe v. Wade allows for this protection. In minimum wage news, Los Angeles has recently become the first major city to set minimum wage above $15. This latest move comes weeks after workers went on strike to raise this number. The move represents a major step forward in worker equality, as these wages wage earners now making enough to finally approach the pay of their counterparts who work for salaries. The Islamic radical group ISIS, which has had a major impact on Middle Eastern countries for over a decade now, seems to have more power than ever. Every time the terrorist group gains more land, they are also gaining more power, or at least perceived power. Perhaps most of their power lies in their influence on social media. Whether their potential is hard power or soft power, the threat has reached the West's ears and many in Washington are calling for action against ISIS through airstrikes and other non-personal means. But this could lead to boots on the ground and the further escalation of war. Do we as a country really want another war? It's clear that wars in the past few decades have only hurt our country. We cannot stand another Iraq war. The Iowa straw poll, which has been held since 1979, is officially dead. The poll was conducted in the past to test public opinion on GOP candidates as well as to fundraise for Republican presidential cam campaigns. Public interest in the poll has been diminishing, but this year was simply not viable. The metaphorical coffin of the poll was sealed shut after GOP presidential candidates Lindsey Graham, Jeb Bush, Mike Huckabee, and Marco Rubio all declared they would not attend the event if it was held. All I can say is, are we really surprised? This is yet another example of an old and worn out party that is struggling to maintain traditions that cannot be continued. Hillary Clinton, the current frontrunner for the Democratic nomination for president, has began making numerous campaign stops in Connecticut, New York, and New Hampshire. I mean, let's face it guys, what campaigning does she have to do? She already has our vote. Now, for some reason Hillary or any other Democrats don't pique your interest. There are more than enough Republican candidates that have declared their presidential campaigns. Among conservatives that have announced are Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, Professor Ben Carson of John Hopkins University, former CEO of Hewlett Packard, Carly Fiorina, and many more. Although this may initially sound promising, any well-educated American knows that 
The race to the White House should be about quality, not quantity. That's just about it, but before we go, in what's the book of the month for June? Well, this month we have New York Times bestseller, HRC, State Secrets and the Rebirth of Hillary Clinton, by Jonathan Allen and Amy Parnes. It's a great read if you're looking to brush up on your future presidents. This is the gripping story of Hillary Clinton's political rebirth and how it set her up to run again in 2016. Well, that'll do it for us here at Just Left of the Right Center. I'm Pat Riley. And I'm Aiden McDonald. Hillary 2016. Good evening and welcome to Just Left of the Right Center. I'm Aiden McDonald. And I'm Pat Riley. Here are tonight's top stories. Wells Fargo recently put out an ad that showed a gay couple adopting a child. This immediately sparked controversy as a prominent evangelical group headed by Franklin Graham announced that they would pull all of his group's millions of dollars out of their Wells Fargo accounts. It is a positive move that displays a business's right to deposit their money where they feel their values will be upheld. In welfare news, lawmakers in Kansas are passing a law that bans people on welfare from purchasing goods such as tattoos, concert tickets, and piercings with their welfare money. This would be a breach, a breath of fresh air for taxpayers, as the money they pay for welfare taxes would actually be spent on items for survival rather than on meaningless goods. Just recently, the world witnessed a striking blow to the sanctity of marriage and the nuclear family. On Saturday, May 23rd, Ireland became the first country to pass gay marriage popularly as well as nationally. The most surprising fact of this ordeal is that 85% of Irish citizens identify as Roman Catholic. Is there no longer any respect for religion? This vote, which passed in favor of marriage equality 1,201,607 votes to 734,300 votes, can only lead to the decline of family values and may spread into other countries. The popular cartoon couple Homer and Marge of the famous American series The Simpsons are rumored to be legally splitting in the upcoming season. The separation of the two in season 27, which is set to air on September 27th, has sparked controversy amongst the show's fans, as it should. Has our country become so comfortable with divorce and the breakup of families that it now makes light on a popular cartoon? At some point, we need a wake-up call to the growth of social liberalism. If nothing has changed, the very state of the GOP may break down. A piece of legislation is making its way through the House this week that looks to allow women to have third trimester abortions, which at the moment is illegal. Since the baby is so far along, these procedures are considered immoral and wrong, even within the medical community. Not passing this law will keep the sanctity of life and allow for each heartbeat to be treated with the respect it deserves. In minimum wage news, the city of Los Angeles has become the first major city in the United States to push minimum wage to $15. Workers have been campaigning for this for the past few months to boost their egos rather than their wallets. By raising minimum wage, a few workers get a raise, but other workers subsequently need to be fired to accommodate these rising prices. The Islamic radical group ISIS, which has had a major impact on Middle Eastern countries for over a decade now, seems to have more power than ever. Every time the terrorist group gains more land, they are also gaining more power, or at least perceived power. Perhaps most of their power lies in their influence on social media. Many in Washington believe the actions of ISIS are out of control and that we should not risk fighting over a group so far away. However, our country has a responsibility as a world power to prevent injustice. If we let this group go now, we may have an even bigger threat in the future than we do now. It is better to act now than later when it's too late. The Iowa straw poll, which has been held since 1979, is officially dead. The poll was conducted in the past to test public opinion on GOP candidates as well as to fundraise for Republican presidential campaigns. Many believe the loss of support was highlighted when GOP presidential candidates Lindsey Graham, Jeb Bush, Mike Huckabee, and Marco Rubio all declared they would not 
be attending this event. This may initially be seen as a failure for the GOP, but really it shows the ability of the party to evolve. If something isn't working within the party, changes need to be made to further strengthen it. The end of the Iowa straw poll is just that. Now, Republicans can find other ways to build support and attract younger generations with new media. Hillary Clinton, the current frontrunner for the Democratic nomination for president, has begun making numerous campaign stops in Connecticut, New York, and New Hampshire. The only campaign spot she should really be stopping at is back at her house. We can confuse left-wing presidential options. The GOP provides more than enough candidates for the race to the White House. Among some of the highest polling Republicans are Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin, Professor Ben Carson of John Hopkins University, and former Governor Jeb Bush of Florida. Not only are there many conservative candidates, but they are more than qualified. The Obama administration has forced Americans to look to Washington for Republican candidates, and Washington has replied in great numbers. That's just about it, but before we go, Aiden, what's the book of the month for June? Well, this month we have a book from New York Times best-selling author and Republican presidential candidate Marco Rubio. The book is called American Dreams, Restoring Economic Opportunity for Everyone. This is a great way to read up on presidential candidates and really reads into the mind of a popular conservative politician. Excellent, Aiden. That'll do for us here at Just Left of the Right Center. I'm Pat Riley. And I'm Aiden McDonald. Until next time, God bless America. Good evening and welcome to Just Left of the Right Center. I'm Aiden McDonald. And I'm Pat Riley. Here are tonight's top stories. Wells Fargo recently put out an ad that depicted a gay couple adopting a child, and it has sparked controversy. One prominent evangelical group has even pulled their funds out of Wells Fargo's accounts. As displaying a tolerant attitude is essential in today's society, corporations have the right to choose where their funds are allocated to. In welfare news, lawmakers in Kansas are passing a law that will ban those on welfare from purchasing piercings, tattoos, and concert tickets with their welfare money. Welfare is a program that is in place for those who are living below the poverty line and need assistance. While it is important that the state establishes these regulations, it is also important that the federal government is involved as well. Just recently, the world witnessed an interesting event in the history of marriage equality. On Saturday, May 23rd, Ireland, despite its strong roots in Catholicism, became the first country to pass gay marriage popularly as well as nationally. This vote, which passed in favor of marriage equality, 1,201,607 votes over 734,300 votes, shows a growing acceptance in non-traditional marriage, but still saw some opposition. The popular cartoon couple Homer and Marge of the famous American series The Simpsons are rumored to be legally splitting in the upcoming season. The separation of the two in season 27, which is set to air on September 27th, has sparked controversy amongst the show's fans. When asked about the split, executive producer Al Jean wanted to set the record clear that this action would not be final and that, quote, by episode 3, everything's the same. I never said the word divorced. That implies finality, end quote. We as viewers of the media, as well as creators, should not read too much into this. This is not a political controversy, nor should it be. This is simply a marketing ploy to draw an audience and to create buzz around the new season. After all, when a show goes on for 27 straight seasons, it gets difficult to find new material. A new federal legislation is aiming to legalize abortions that are conducted after the third trimester. At the moment, they are illegal because the baby is too far along at that point. The frustra this frustrates parents, as they feel that their ability to choose is taken away from them. At the end of the day, the two groups, life and choice, will seem to battle endlessly as they look to prove one another wrong. In minimum wage news, Los Angeles has become the first major city to raise its minimum wage to $15. This movement 
comes weeks after workers protested to be paid more. While workers have their right to protest, the needs and time of the company of others is being wasted. And this is unfair to them. However, the workers do have the right to be paid wages that will help them sustain a family. The Islamic radical group ISIS, which has had a major impact on Middle Eastern countries for over a decade now, seems to have more power than ever. Whether their potential is hard power or soft power, the threat has been reasonable cause for alarm in Washington. Some are calling for a U.S. attack on the terrorist group, while others want to stay out of this foreign affair. Perhaps most of their power lies in their influence on social media. Every week a new story comes out that uneducated Muslim youth heed the call of ISIS on social networks and flock to Syria and Iraq. Before any nation can stop the group, they should focus on cutting its supply routes of new members through education about Islam and against ignorance. The Iowa Straw Poll, which has been held since 1979, is officially dead. The poll was conducted in the past to test public opinion on GOP candidates, as well as to fundraise for Republican presidential campaigns. When GOP presidential candidates Lindsey Graham, Jeb Bush, Mike Huckabee, and Marco Rubio all declared they would not attend the event if it was held, it became evident it could no longer stay afloat. It should be interesting to see how this affects different conservative campaigns in the near future. Hillary Clinton, the current frontrunner for the Democratic nomination for presidency, has begun making numerous campaign stops in Connecticut, New York, and New Hampshire. We wish another hopeful presidential candidate the best of luck in their campaign. If the Democratic candidates aren't quite doing it for you, there are plenty of just as promising Republican candidates. Among some of those running are Lindsey Graham, Marco Rubio, Mike Huckabee, Carly Fiorina, and Jeb Bush. That's just about it. But before we go, Aiden, what's the book of the month for June? Well, this month we have The Irish Brotherhood, uh, JFK, His Inner Circle, and The Improbable Rise to the Presidency by Helen and Kenneth O'Donnell. Uh, now, yes, this book may have some 1960s Democratic themes, but if you can get past that, it's a great book for the po politics of the time. Uh, now, if you want to stay away from the politics and you're just looking for a good read, you can also try The Great Gatsby. Uh, by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This book was suggested by our literary analyst, Miss Gabriel, and is said to be one of the all-time greats. That's awesome, Aiden. That'll do it for us here at the studio. I'm Pat Riley. And I'm Aiden McDonald's for Just Left and the Right Center. As usual, stick to the facts.